Hey everybody, Joe here with Joyful Camping, and it is time for a test. This guy right here, we gotta see how much amperage this guy actually draws because I'm in the market for a generator, so I've gotta do my research on this and find out a little bit of information. Let's get into it. All right, now this is my current generator. Yeah, as you can see right here, 83, 84-ish decibels, and this is with basically no load on it thus far. It is just an open frame generator, it is noisy. I've done a test with this before where I've had it in the back of my truck, and I can link that in the video description below, but the main problem here is it's also big, and I don't really want to have this in the back of my SUV having to lug it out of that thing every time I want to go out camping. So, we're going to move inside the trailer and for being able to see how much amperage the AC unit draws. So, let's jump in there now. Now, in order to complete this test here, what I've done is utilize my 30 amp adapter down to this 15 amp adapter. Now, the AC unit itself has a 15 amp plug on it so as long as i'm not running the the, uh, the fridge any other electronics etc in here then i should be good for completing this test without tripping any breakers etc or you know worrying about melting any wires because of the 30 amp to the 15 amp you just have to be really mindful of what you're doing during this test the other part of this test which is which why i needed the 15 amp is this little device that I've got here. It splits out each leg of the circuit. You know, you've got your ground, your hot, and your neutral. And basically it will tell me, utilizing one of these clamp meters, how many amps are being drawn through here. So that way I can get actual accurate information about what's going on. So first thing I need to do, break the circuit here and put it in line. And then just to make sure that everything's all good, I also got my tester here. And, ooh, that's interesting. Open ground. Okay. So I don't know why I would have an open ground. That's curious. Okay, this is why we test these things and this is important things to find out. So. I'm gonna go troubleshoot this. I'll be right back. Okay, I messed around with the wires a little bit and I didn't have to replace anything. I'm wondering if one of the contacts on the inside of one of these DIY plugs out there at the end of the extension cord is having a little bit of a problem. One of them that I put on there was problematic with staying into it. When you, like, when you plug something into it, whatever you plug in just wants to fall out. So. I think that that's what the problem was. Either way, I plug my tester in. I've got the two lights, and according to my tester, down at the very bottom, correct, two lights, two of the amber lights. Nothing red, just the two. We're good to go. So, I'm going to unplug it from there, and we're going to plug in the trailer. So now, the reason, this is kind of the short condensed version, etc. I pull these leads out so they're just not in the way because I don't need those. We're going to go to voltage here. Or excuse me, we're doing amps. My bad, amps. Um, the reason that you don't just go around the entire cable like this, I'm reading zero. Okay. Now if I go to the individual leg, see if I can hold this right so you can be able to see. Just around the single leg, I am drawing 0.6 amps. So that's probably the charge controller, any little fan that's with it to be able to keep going. I've, I've actually got a bunch of lights on in here right now for filming so that you guys can see a little bit better. But um, again, looks like we actually dropped down to 0.5 now. Maybe something kicked off. I, I thought I heard a fan for a second, but I put it around neutral. You'll see again the 0.5. And 
That explains why when you clamp it around here, you get zero because these two will cancel each other out. So I know that's a quick and dirty, but that's how you are able to test the amperage without having to have anything specialized um, if you already have some of this hardware available to you. So, all right. Now, we're going to actually kick on the fan of the air conditioner. All right, as you can see here, this is essentially a window unit that's built into the side of the RV. And I'm going to take it right in the middle just to start off with and see how many amps it's going to be pulling right in the middle. We're going to turn on the fan first. And you know what? Let's do a full test here. Let's just see starting off with low fan. I'm actually running on the generator outside so that I can get some usage out of it, break it in. But all right, low fan. Now, let's check the amps here. This is going to be tricky to do. I apologize for kind of throwing the camera everywhere. And you're not really supposed to touch the wire when you do this. You're supposed to just have it straddle it like off of the wire a little bit. So this is really difficult to test, but I think this will do. We'll do good for the purposes of what we need to do here. 0.75 amps, so not much on low fan. Now, let's turn it up to high fan. Oh, interesting. Basically the same, I'm gonna slide that there. I'm just gonna hold it. Basically the same amount of amperage pull, okay. 0.8 when it goes up right against it. All right, I know it's not perfectly scientific, but all right, next, low cool. This is where the big draw is gonna start coming from. So starting off on low fan. Okay, low cool, I can hear the compressor kicking in. All right, there we go. I can actually hear the generator out there working a little bit harder now. 3.4 amps as that compressor is kicking in. Now this particular AC unit doesn't have a temperature setting. It's basically just how cool do you want it to be, etc. So let's test low cool a little bit further and turn this up max cool. Okay, we're about 3.6 amps. So that's some good information for low cool. And it must be maybe the, the cycle of the AC unit. Maybe it'll cycle for 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off or something on max cool. Not exactly sure, don't quote me on that. But 3.7 amps now. So I'm gonna turn this back down to five and a half here. We're gonna kick it over to high cool. Sorry, I'm grabbing my fingers pointing at the same time. I'm trying to do this all in one shot, so there's no disputing this whatsoever of the change down there as I'm doing this. Okay, high cool. And then down here we've got the 3.8. So a little bit of a change, not a huge change though. So that's good to know. Okay, so 3.8 amps, high cool. I can feel, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, I got like, my little mini fig here. Hi, dude. Um, I can feel the cold air, it's blowing out. Uh, in here right now, it is 75 degrees. And yeah, that's blowing nice and cool. Oh, I gotta change these fins a little bit. Oh, sorry, shouldn't do that right now, but either way, okay, high cool. Last thing we have not tested yet is the max cool, see if that does anything different of what we're working on here. And we are still sitting at about 3.8 amps. Okay, so what is 3.8 amps equal? Um, math on the fly. So you take the, the 120 volts, you times that by 3.8 Basically, that's, oh, now we're up to, uh, to 3.9, so that high cool must be kicking in a little bit more of that draw. Okay. So now 
now I know exactly how much generator power I need. And this is talking about just for the AC unit and anything else that may be running. Um, the fridge is not turned on right now. And that will have a bigger impact also. If you wanted to run AC, fridge, you know, anything with a water pump, all that stuff, you're going to need a bigger generator. But now I know, oh, it just jumped up. Four amps. Something changed. We're at four amps now. Okay. That's good to know. Good to see that. I'm glad I'm tracking this. And again, the wire, this, this clamp should not be really be touching the side of it. All right. Now, why is this important? Really is what this boils down to is that question. Why is this important? And it's because when you're running your generator, if you pull more than that generator can provide, you're going to trip a breaker. You're going to potentially damage that generator. And especially on a smaller generator that does not have the 30 amp plug, you either have to use an adapter, like I did, or you have to use a, com uh, a combination kit where you've got two of the, say, 2,000 watt generators. They go through this piece of equipment that then puts those in phase and provides the two legs to the 30 amp of your trailer to be able to power everything with enough power. So this is essentially risky. And I have to say that because, you know, hey, do anything with this information what you will at your own risk basically what it boils down to is that i could take a 2000 watt generator and probably run my ac unit that's the thing probably so why don't we go one step further and let's run this realistically let's see what happens when we throw it onto a 2000 watt generator is it going to work 500 watts Theory says it should. Let's test it out in the real world. All right, as we can see here, we've got the Honda 2000 all fired up, and it is about 10 decibels quieter than that other generator. Now, granted, it is a little bit of comparing apples to oranges because the other one's an open frame generator, whereas this one is an inverter generator. But still, it's nicer to have that 10 decibels quieter for when you're at a campground, etc. Just a little bit nicer. So now let's move back inside. All right, we are back into the trailer now, and as we can see, it's pulling the 0.6 amps. And I've let it run here for a minute just so that the charge controller can do its thing after being plugged in, etc. And the lights are running, and that's just so it's not so dark as I'm filming. Coming up here now to the air conditioner. You know what? Let's just go full 10, full send, and put it on that high, cool. We can see it's kicked in here at that. 3.3 amps and we saw that on the other generator as well when it initially kicks on i had my ear out and i heard the generator take on that low but it wasn't like it was about to die or anything so the initial surge from the air conditioner was not that big of a deal pulling the uh, required uh, amperage on that sometimes you might need a soft start depending on you know what you've got and whatnot but that's a whole other discussion so Seeing that 3.3 amps, 3.4 amps as it kicks off, it's blowing cool. This is super nice. I'm not worried about this generator being able to handle the load of this air conditioner. So no problems at all. And we can see it's creeping up just a little bit, that 3.5. It's going to continue to do that probably up till that same roughly 3.8, 3.9 as the pressure in the air conditioner builds up, etc. So that's great to see. Now, the final thing to really touch base on here is the difference in run times for these two generators. The big 3500 generator, that one is going to run for about 12 hours. But if you calculate the run time versus the fuel used, you're looking at about 0.4 gallons per hour. Now, on the Honda generator, that's the 2000. Granted, Smaller generator is going to burn less fuel, etc., but it's also providing less power, right? Now, if I'm not utilizing a lot of that power, what do we got right here? We've got a runtime of eight hours, but only a gallon of fuel, which boils down to about 0.1 gallons per hour. So, it benefits you to go with a smaller generator if you're not going to be using as much power, because you're going to save so much on the fuel burned over time.
with that said, do with the information as you will. Be safe out there and take any precautions necessary. You could even go as far as plugging in directly to the AC unit, completely eliminating everything else in the trailer, just to be on the safe side that you're not going to be tripping any breakers, melting any wires, etc. And that's probably what I'll end up doing as well, just because I really like my trailer and I don't want to have any you know issues come up from it. But uh, at least we've done the test. Now I know. Make sure to pitch the attend on that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in another video. See ya.